What's up my friends, welcome back. You're watching Harv, video audio stuff, and have you ever wondered how to use Hybrid Log Gamma or HLG in your video? Regulars of this channel will know that I've been shooting S-Log2 and more recently S-Log3 for years now. So I wanna know how it compares. Is HLG better? How should I expose it? And then how should I grade it? Should I grade it at all? Ah, just too many questions. Uh, it's time to stop this waffle. I'm gonna shut up and roll that intro. <laughs> As ever, links to everything mentioned in this video are popped in the description box below. And of course, this isn't sponsored content, so your support means a lot to me. If you could hit the notification bell next to your subscribe button, it just means the world to me, plus you will never miss a video. Let's get on with it. This video exists because of popular demand from you. I've had so many requests for this kind of video over the years that I've finally given in and I'm doing it. I've done a ton of research, as I do for every single video. So I wanna start with the question of what is HLG? Because there seems to be quite a bit of confusion over what it is and what it's for. HLG is a hybrid of two contrast curves or gammas. It's Rex 1109 and Log, which sounds great to begin with and it does have some benefits, but it also has plenty of disadvantages. In my opinion, on paper, it sounds like not a great combination of gamma curves because they both require a little bit of tweaking but in very different ways. However, I feel like some context is useful here. HLG was originally designed for delivering footage and not shooting it. And a lot of people still say that it can't truly look its best until it's displayed on a true HDR display. If you're thinking that you can just shoot HLG and it will automatically look good on HDR displays, well, it's not quite that simple. To properly grade for HDR, you need HDR reference monitors and they can get really, properly expensive. Anyway, I don't want to get too much into HDR in this video. I want to focus on using HLG that's destined for standard displays. Anyway, right, let's get on and expose some HLG. So looking at this first shot and having read up quite a bit about HLG beforehand, my instinct was to expose in this way, which was to expose fairly brightly. I actually did it until the exposure meter on the back just tickled the plus two mark. Now I really hate the exposure meter on the back of the Sony cameras. Regular viewers will be very familiar with my loathing for it, but I thought it's a decent way to communicate this to you. I can tell you now of all the different levels of exposure I used, this was the best one. To me, it looked the most natural and had the least amount of weird colors. When I stretch out the footage just a little bit, I get this, which I think is a really lovely looking shot, if a little bit over saturated, but that's kind of been my experience with all of HD. HLG. When I back off the saturation a little bit and add a lookup table that I like, in this case it's the Velocor Aspen, at only 25% it looks like this. And I'm pretty happy with this. In a moment I will show you how this compares to S-Log3 because it was quite interesting. Next I moved our exposure one stop lower and don't worry I used shutter speed. That gives us the most accurate means of testing different exposures. And to me this looks a bit dull so let's stretch it out now and see what happens. Okay, so pretty good again. I'm fairly happy with this. It looks, to be honest, pretty similar to the last clip. I would be okay with exposing both ways. Of course, as I lower the exposure, I'm gonna be doing progressively more stretching of the highlights. So keep your eyes peeled on that. Moving on again, and this is now two stops lower than our first clip. And to me, this looks really dull. I mean, can you believe the Sony exposure meter on the back of the camera was saying that this is just a third of a stop overexposed? I mean, it's terrible. This is not well exposed. This clip required even more stretching out and from this point on, you may notice some banding. I'm not quite sure what I'm seeing here, but to me, it looks like the colors are starting to get quite strange and I'm looking at the buildings in the distance. Anyway, moving on, I want to try one more stop lower at three stops lower than our first clip just to see what happens. And as you can probably guess from our last clip, this one is even worse. To me, the colors are super odd. I had to do lots of stretching of the highlights to get to this and it's bad. But anyway, next I wondered what would happen if we exposed a stop higher than the original clip. Well, it looks like this and with a bit of stretching, it looks like this. And to me, even just one stop higher than we were 
to begin with. The highlights to me are looking pretty hot. They look like they're going to clip any second and it's quite uncomfortable to look at. Finally, I went to stops over and I shouldn't have bothered. I can tell just looking at the clip before stretching it out, the highlights are blown, but let's do it anyway. And there we go, the sky looks pretty horrible. What all of this testing tells me is that you need to be quite particular about how you expose HLG. Too dark and the highlights require, I think, an unhealthy amount of stretching. Too bright and I found the colours get really kind of wonky and the highlights clip fairly early and in a very disgusting looking way. So you've got to nail it. I did say I compare the HLG clip to S-Log3 and here you can see them side by side. I can tell you as I was there, the S-Log3 version is much more similar to what I was seeing in person. And now that we can compare, the HLG colours do look a little bit odd, but in a way I do quite like the sort of 3D-ness of it. Does that make sense? Next, I wanted to see what would happen when I used HLG for my main studio angle. So here it is. So this is what it looks like when I shoot this angle in HLG. I've just done some minor colour tweaks and I imagine the colours probably look really different, but that's kind of just what you get. And here we are back using S-Log3 with my standard grade of some kind of colour correction, colour curves and a lookup table. Uh, obviously it's far more effort, but it's far more flexible. What do you think? compared. Side by side they don't look a million miles away from each other. However, there are a number of things that I prefer on the S-Log3 version. The most obvious one being the way that HLG deals with highlights. You can see the neon sign and the tungsten light behind me both super saturated and really quite unnatural and distracting. Actually the way that I tweaked the HLG footage was to sort of try and match my S-Log3 grade. And honestly the colours straight out of camera were pretty shockingly wonky and kind of horrible. So this shot required some desaturation and adjustment to the tint and that kind of thing. It's kind of strange really because before I hit record I did a custom white balance and yet I ended up with a bizarre looking clip. When you look at the HLG gamma curve it's pretty bizarre because the mid to low portion of it looks really different to the highlights. The mid to lower portion of the signal values use a linear style gamma like Rec. 709 or Cine 1 and the upper section of the signal values use a log curve, much like S-Log2 or 3. I've been trying to think of an apt analogy of this, and the closest thing I can think of is to have a two-layered cake, of which the bottom layer is cooked and delicious, and the top layer is cake mix. This means that potentially, when you come to edit your footage, the highlight areas may respond really different to grading than the mid and shadow areas. So how should you treat your HLG footage when you import it into your software? So diving into Final Cut and you can see that when I hover over the clip, the preview of it actually looks fine, but then when you drop it into your timeline, it looks pretty horrific and blown out. Now at this stage, Final Cut will recognise the fact that you're trying to import HDR footage and it will prompt you to use the HDR Tools plugin. Now it will look automatically a little bit better, but you will have to go into the plugin and let it know that you're actually using HLG footage. And actually straight away I was pretty damn impressed with this. It's a little low contrast, particularly in the shadow areas, but check out the colours. They're lovely. Of course this is going to be really really easy to correct. With an instance of colour wheels I'm just going to drop the overall exposure just a touch and then drag the shadows down a little and give the highlights a tiny little boost. The only thing you might want to check with a clip like this is the level of saturation as this is looking particularly bold and saturated. But otherwise I think it looks pretty great. Something to bear in mind with HLG is because of the weird gamma curve the highlight range is actually squidged into a relatively small recording range. So if you have to stretch out your highlights too much in grading, you might start to notice things like banding or other artifacts. Of course, this phenomenon is gonna be more noticeable with 8-bit footage, and I think that's the reason why I had better results when exposing brightly, because there was basically less stretching needed. So, so far, I kind of like HLG. I think I actually might prefer it to all of the Cine Gammas and even S-Cinetone. However, you can see as I just go through this speed grade of the same clip from earlier, but when I shot it in S-Log3, there is one thing that might stop me from using HLG in future, and that's to do with a set of very special lookup tables that I love to use. And yes, you guessed it, it's the Phantom lookup tables. The way that they deal with colour is really quite unique outside of ARRI, colour science. 
They do something really unique, which the creator of Phantom Lutz calls hue curling, which I'm going to show you in just a second, but it is amazing. And of course, this is not something that I can get when I use HLG footage because they're just not compatible. So here's my finished grade of this clip, and I've graded it using the Phantom Neutral lookup table, which is kind of the standard Ari look. And I've added a draw mask, and I'm just going to make a mask around this woman's coat. And that's just because I want to isolate something that's red coloured. So when we do that and look at it on the vector scope, you can see that the colour curls towards magenta, and this will be much more pronounced the more we saturate the colours. When we do the same thing on the HLG clip, you can see how straight the line is in comparison. This hue curling from the Phantom Lutz really leads to some quite complex and interesting images. What's more is it's not even unique to just the reds, it also happens to the blues and oranges, so I think I'd probably miss not having this hue curling. Anyway, now let's gather up everything we've learned in this video and draw some conclusions. In my opinion, HLG is definitely easier to use than S-Log3. Big surprise there. But that is if you're just looking for a good looking standard Rec. 709 style image. Be under no illusion, S-Log3 gives far more dynamic range, no competition. Exposing HLG I found actually not as easy as you'd think, and from my testing, fairly brightly without clipping gave me the best results. Outside of stretching the image out and checking your saturation, grading is possible, but I would advise a very delicate touch. At the beginning of this video I asked a few questions. Firstly, is HLG better than S-Log3, aka do I prefer it? And then how do you expose it, and then should you grade it, and if so, how? And I'm going to answer these now. So firstly, how does HLG compare to S-Log3? Admittedly, I was very sceptical before doing my testing, because I'm such a big fan of S-Log3, but I was very pleased with the results I got using HLG3. Using the HDR tools in Final Cut, I was able to get a very HDR look with very accurate colours. The exception being this shot, of course, which had very strange colours. The only thing that might stop me from using HLG is the fact that I really like using the Phantom LUTs, which so brilliantly replicate the ARRI colours. I mentioned the the colour curling in uh, earlier in the video. I'm also thinking about investigating how HLG performs in low light, and if you want to see that, do let me know in the comment section, either comment or, I'll tell you what, if you like the pinned comment at the top of the video, I'll link it, it'll be the, the first comment you get to, and I'll know that you want to see that. So how should you expose HLG? Well, on the whole, I found fairly brightly so that you have to do less stretching of the highlights. It's kind of tricky to communicate exposure over YouTube, so I suppose what you could do is set your zebras, between 95 and 100% and that way, you know, there's no clipping highlights because that's still a big no-no, obviously. But should you grade HLG? And the reason I ask that is because Alistair Chapman says you shouldn't, and he's pretty smirrit. Well, from my testing, I found that your footage will almost certainly need some form of stretching out, and you'll definitely want to check the levels of saturation in your footage. I found that on almost every occasion I had to back it off a little bit because it was just too much. Okay, so if we're going to grade, how should we do it? Well, start by applying the HDR tools, and there's definitely equivalents in every single editor, so just do that. And then select the correct setting. In my case, it was HLG to Rec. 709. Um, do some stretching check the saturation, and then if you want to, you can do some grading. You can do a little bit of colour tweaking here and there, be gentle, and you could even add a lookup table that's designed for Rec. 709 footage as you've done that conversion. But again, be gentle. You might want to dial down to, I don't know, 10, 20%. Just keep it really subtle. It's just my advice. So there you go. What do you think? Do you use HLG3? If so, I would love to hear your workflow from exposing to grading and, well, or not grading as the case may be. And let's just load up the comment section with knowledge because then we all learn together and that's the kind of, that's the whole point of these videos. Anyway, that's it for now. You can ask me questions about anything in this video in the comment section below if you want to. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. I've got a large back catalogue of videos about videography on this channel of which YouTube has handpicked this video for you. And the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Slip
Sun.